Now we're festive. You can't even see my candle. This won't do. Now you can't see my coffee cup. And now you can see my candle. Guys, I haven't done a meteorology Monday in so long. It's like impossible for me to remember how I set this up. That seems, is it too wide? It's too, I don't care. You know what? Cue the intro. Welcome back to College Tips with Kayla. Just kidding. What's up guys, it's Kayla and welcome back to Meteorology Monday. Look, I got Christmas lights today because it's festive and it's December finally. So it's Christmas light season. Look how festive I am, do you see that? We're gonna put that back now. And I have a festive candle. It smells wonderful. I wish you could smell it. You're not here for my candle review though, are you? No, today. We are going to be talking about some more college tips. Specifically, we'll be going over how to pick the best college for you. So I'm assuming that everybody watching this video is thinking about going into some form of atmospheric sciences, whether that be meteorology, climatology, or you're just interested in general and don't know what specific part. Hopefully this video will help you figure out exactly what you want to do and what type of school will be best. So you love weather, you're interested in studying meteorology, but what school do you go to, right? Like, how do you pick a school? Are there a lot of schools? Are there not very many schools? Do you have to go out of state? Do you have to go to a big one? Do you have to go to a small one? Today, let's answer those questions. So one of the questions I always get asked is, Kayla, what schools are best known for meteorology? I'm glad you asked. Let's get those out of the way right up here in the front. Top schools in the United States, of course. You've got Oklahoma University, Penn State, Texas A&M, UCLA, University of Washington, Florida State, Colorado State, SUNY Albany, NC State, and I think those are all the major ones. Forgive me if I missed any. Those are the kind of, you know, renowned schools. Are there other schools that offer meteorology? Of course. There are other small schools that offer actual atmospheric science programs. There are smaller schools that offer earth sciences with a concentration in meteorology. Some just offer a minor in meteorology. There are tons of different options. These are just the, the big names that everybody associates with meteorology. Now I know what you're thinking. Wow, I should probably go to one of these big schools, right? Not necessarily. I, for example, if you don't know this already, I talk about it in almost every video. I went to the University of North Carolina at Asheville. I'm going to compare UNCA to a bigger school, let's say Oklahoma University. If you don't know anything about UNCA, it's got about 3,000 students. <laughs> which is pretty small compared to, you know, these colleges that have like 50,000. Um, we're on the small side. <laughs> that being said, we still had a meteorology program. Now, OU has tens of times more students. It is known as like the biggest severe weather school in the country. A lot of people who say, hey, I want to study tornadoes and I want to go storm chasing and stuff like that end up at OU. This was partially the case for me while I was applying to schools. I applied to a few different ones. One of them was UNCA. Another one was OU. And I did get accepted into both. Now, Kayla, why in the world would you choose tiny little UNCA that nobody's ever heard of over Oklahoma University that's incredibly hard to get into and is like the top severe weather tornado chasing yada 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 school in the country. Are you insane? Maybe. The reason, I do have a good reason why I did it though. And this comes down to what type of atmospheric science slash meteorology you want to do. One of the major differences between a smaller school like UNCA and a bigger school like OU is emphasis on the graduate students and the graduate programs. UNCA is a very small school has an atmospheric science department but the school is 98% undergrads. There is no graduate program for atmospheric sciences at a smaller school like UNCA. There is however a major graduate student program for big schools like OU. So the drop rate for meteorology or the amount of students who drop out of the meteorology program is incredibly high. It's one of the highest drop rate majors out there. I think it's like over 70% dropout. So only 30% of the undergrads with you in your freshman class will make it with you to graduation. That's an incredible amount of people who switch majors, okay? So in your OU freshman class, 
If you're one out of 100, only 30 of you will make it to graduation and 70 of the people in your class will drop out before like the first year is over. This means that while your classes are still big and before that drop rate has really taken its toll, your foundation level classes are going to be a lot harder because the professors are dealing with hundreds of students compared to just a few. My freshman class had 20. And then once you get up into your senior classes and you're down to your last 30% that's left over, now you're gonna have a harder time because those foundation classes that the professors didn't have very much time for you, you missed important details. So going to a bigger school, you get like the reputation and the name and stuff, but you don't necessarily get a better education just because of the name. Another thing is research opportunities. I know that there are a lot of you, like me out there, who are looking to go into meteorology specifically because you want to research tornadoes. Maybe you watched the movie Twister or you saw a TV show about storm chasers and you really got excited about meteorology and weather and storm chasing and studying tornadoes and increasing warning times and all these types of things. That's exactly what I went for. If research is something that you want to do, going to a bigger school is not going to give you the same opportunities as a smaller school. So for example, a big school like Oklahoma University, the research projects, since there are so many graduates and a requirement for graduating with a master's or a PhD is to have done research and thesis and all this stuff, all of, or at least 90% of the research opportunities at these bigger schools will go to these graduate students. If you're an undergraduate, you're not going to get very many opportunities to jump into these research projects. Basically, big school emphasis on graduate students, small school emphasis on undergraduates. At UNCA, every single major has to do some form of research. It's not a research school, but undergraduate research is one of the things that UNCA is known for. That's why I end up going there. It gave me an opportunity as an undergraduate to do graduate research while I was still in my first four years. So not only did I get to do the research that I loved and was my passion and still is, I also got a lot more one-on-one -on -one time with professors to ask questions and get help with my homeworks and to get one-on-one -on -one help with my research projects. I got to know my classmates and professors a lot better than if there were hundreds of students. Uh, for reference, my graduating class, there were nine or ten of us. That's small. <laughs> So by getting to know your classmates and professors, you're going to be able to be involved in a lot more because they personally know you, and you're also going to have more help with your classes and coursework. Some benefits for a bigger school though is that they have a bigger budget. If you are able to get into a research project or program in one of these bigger schools, they're much better funded than a smaller school. That's just how it is. So you might have a lot more opportunities if you go to a bigger school. Another reason I didn't go to OU is because it's in the middle of Tornado Alley and, you know, me, Storm Chaser, lover of the tornadoes, in the middle of the tornadoes' homes. Yeah, I wouldn't have done any of my homework. <laughs> Spring semester? Who's she? We don't know her. We only know Storm Chasing. So instead, you know, let's go into the Blue Ridge Mountains to this tiny school in a valley where there are no tornadoes and uh, maybe I won't spend six years trying to get a four-year degree. And it worked out! Now that we've talked about the differences between small schools and larger schools, let's get into how to pick exactly which school you should go to based on what you want to do. So we're gonna break this up into categories, okay? So if you're interested in weather, you are interested in atmospheric sciences. Under that, you have a few different things. You've got meteorology, you've got climatology, You've got broadcast, those are your big three. And then you have assorted miscellaneous ones. These miscellaneous ones can be like space weather or field work or environmental studies, oceanography type things. Things that are related to weather, but not specifically. Like they have, they intersect with other majors type thing. Atmospheric chemists that kind of stuff, you know? If you guys want, I can do a full video on what you can do with an atmospheric science degree. If you guys are interested, definitely leave a comment below letting me know that you are. If not, I'm gonna film something else. Number one piece of advice if you are looking to be a research blank, research meteorologist, research climatologist, whatever, make sure that the school that you're going to not only has a good research program, 
but also A, research is the type of stuff that you want to research so that you get experience. B, has a good enough budget that it isn't going to get canceled halfway through. But C, most importantly of all, allows undergraduates to participate. If at all possible, go to the school and talk to the professors, see the department, talk to the head of the department, say, hey, I'm interested in this. Do you have any professors that specify in it? Do you have any opportunities for somebody like me coming in as you know a freshman, a sophomore, a transfer, whatever, to be able to participate? Is this something that I would have to wait years? Is this something I would have to be a graduate student for? Find out all of those things before you decide, yes, I'm going to this school or no, I'm not. I don't think going to you know the University of North Dakota Bismarck for tropical meteorology is going to be the number one school just you know seeing how it's in the middle of a huge landmass and the ocean is miles and miles and miles and states away <laughs> so keep that in mind as well disclaimer university of north dakota that was totally i just picked a school i don't know if they have one or not probably don't since it's north dakota but carry on so there you have it college tips with kayla that is my best advice on how to pick a specific school for the type of meteorology you want to do some things to be aware of some things to think about some things that i didn't know until i actually got to college or right before don't waste your money on applications to schools that you don't actually want to go to do your research really well know what you want to do and then find a school that fits that perfectly talk to the professors there and visit the school if at all possible before you apply and or go that way you get a feel of it you get to know the professors and the students you know what's expected and you know whether or not you're going to be able to be involved in things that you want to be involved in right off the bat saves you from being disappointed later also saves you from wasting a few years at the wrong university and then realizing halfway through that oops I went to the wrong school and this doesn't have what I want also be open to change Leave yourself some wiggle room where you can expand what you want to do or change it. Don't limit yourself to a specific school if you're not quite sure what you want to do. Like, I like severe weather, but I also like like just regular forecasting in general or, or I like snow. Maybe don't go to a school that only has one of those. You know, studying snow in Florida probably wouldn't be that great, although it would be great for tropical meteorology. Probably not Northwest Flow Snow Meteorology. <laughs> and I think that's gonna do it for the video today. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below a video suggestion. Or if you wanna see the video I mentioned earlier, hit the subscribe button here on YouTube so that you never miss another Meteorology Monday. Follow us over on Instagram and Facebook if you want to see more of our weather adventures. It's coming up to snow season here in Central North Carolina. So I uh, should be expecting some snow here in the next couple weeks and then not again until February. But if you want to see our upcoming snow adventures, make sure that you follow us over there. And until next time, I'm Kayla. Thanks for watching and happy college hunting. Guys, I got a new candle. I don't know, I'm super excited about it because I love candles. <laughs>